I wrote Animate Earth to counteract the dreadful mechanistic relationship that we have with the Earth. We see the Earth as a dead machine that we can exploit and use as we wish without let or hindrance. And this view, unfortunately, has come to us through a mistaken understanding of scientific knowledge. So what I've tried to do in Animate Earth is to take the science and bring it together with wisdom. This is what we desperately need now at this time of severe ecological, social and climate crisis. Science has given us some fantastic stories about the Earth. Just think about plate tectonics, about the evolution of stars, about the evolution of organisms. What wonderful details we now have about the cosmos and about the Earth. But unfortunately in our culture we developed a kind of science which really believes that everything around us is nothing more than a dead machine. And this has allowed us to exploit the Earth so much that now we're at the brink of this tremendous climate catastrophe. So in Animate Earth what I do is bring an ancient sensibility of the soulfulness of the Earth and of the cosmos together with the scientific, modern scientific understanding of the Earth. And by bringing these two together I think we can create a new understanding of the Earth which will help us to heal our relationship with the Earth which is both modern and contemporary and also brings in ancient wisdom from the, the past of our own culture. Our separation from nature predates the scientific revolution by a long, long way. But during the scientific revolution, people like Descartes said that it was fine to cut open live dogs and to ignore the screams of those dogs because after all those screams were nothing more than the creakings of a dead machine. So if the Earth isn't a machine, then what is it like? Well, modern science shows us that in fact the Earth is much more like a psyche than it is a machine. And if the Earth really is a psyche, it means that we have to develop a new kind of science, a science that's able to bring the rigorous scientific information from mainstream science and combine it with poetry. We need to make science and poetry come together for the first time ever in our culture. So how do we do this? In my book, I speak of the chemical elements as people, as personalities. Because after all, quantum physics has shown us that electrons are like people too. They are unpredictable, flighty, coy, and sometimes rather irritating. And the chemical elements are no different. For example, I speak of carbon as the prince in the atmosphere with his two oxygen equerries trying to marry the calcium princesses that are locked up in the castle of granite rocks. And this marriage, which is brought together by water, the priest, actually has helped to cool the earth over three and a half thousand million years. Now, if we tell the stories of science in this way, if we tell them as fairy stories, suddenly they come alive and the soul of the earth can spark forth and inspire us to once again connect deeply with the animate earth. In my book I explain all this and give you techniques and contemplations for reconnecting with the Earth. Animate Earth is endorsed by James Lovelock, Jonathan Porritt and Fritjof Capra. It's available from Green Books and all good bookshops.